Okay, so let's have a look at the HNC Manufacturing Engineering Program. Uh, initially, we'll look at the units themselves, where to start the preferred order to take the units, and also some study tips for you um, to progress through the modules um, efficiently. Okay, so the units themselves. So in this program, um, as in all of the engineering HNC programs, by the way, there are four what we call mandatory core units. So in other words, everybody has to do them. Okay, and we've got engineering design, maths and science, and project. Normally we leave project till the end. Obviously you need some underpinning knowledge before you can effect a really good project. Uh, for this program we have some mandatory specialist units, and in this case uh, there are two for manufacture, which is really important, of course, and quality and process improvement. So effectively, you can add these two onto those previous four there, okay, which gives you six. You still need another two units to achieve the HNC. And in so contemplating, you have a large choice of 20 plus HNC, make up your program and give it some flexibility and um, style it towards your employer's wishes or your own CV, wherever it might be. Okay, let's have a look at the order of events which is preferred for you on this program. So initially we're going to hit the engineering maths module, gives you good underpinning knowledge to then proceed on to engineering science. Those two will then give you tools to effectively navigate your way through the production engineering for manufacture and the quality and process improvement modules. At that point, then you pick a, a level four option. You'd be even more informed then and, uh, at that point in your program. You would then pick yet another level four option, any level four option you want. You end up the qualification with uh, engineering design and finally engineering projects. So we're going to be navigating downwards basically on a vertical uh, through this route. Okay. Now some study tips for you. Okay, I think we've got six of them here. Workbooks. Now then, we do recommend that you read through all of the workbooks, okay? Don't miss bits out, and especially take notice to the worked examples, because quite often they reflect the type of assignment question that you may find um, on your virtual learning environment. Okay. <coughs> the modules themselves, well, stick to one module at a time, okay? Keep your focus. Um, don't go going off on a tangent doing two, three, four modules at a time. You'll you be more effective and a higher achiever if you can just stick with one module at a time, okay? Okay, some tips regarding assignments. Right, you can only as submit one assignment at a time. Okay, so we have some, uh, we, we like to be effective and efficient and have a high turnaround in terms of marking. So we have a system whereby you submit an assignment and you know one of the teachers, myself or one of many other colleagues nowadays, um, will try to mark it same day or usually the day after. Okay, um, but don't be submitting loads of assignments all at once uh, because then you're going to be sort of crowding the teachers and we want fair play for all of the other many students that we have. Okay. There's another good reason why you should only submit one assignment at a time, and that's because if you make a mistake, let's just, for example, say maths assignment one, and you, all the way through the assignment, you've had your calculator in the wrong mode, and or you're not including SI units, that information given to you by the assessor at the end of assignment one is going to help you to have a much more improved version of assignment two, but if you've already done assignment two, you've missed those early tips. Okay, so a number of good reasons to just submit one assignment at a time. Okay, let's have a look at the format of the actual assignments. 
So if it's maths and science, especially those two, we do recommend that you hand write your assignments. I've done it myself whereby you're on a word processor many years ago, I think on my first degree, and looking for some obscure Greek letter in the top right menu somewhere, and by the time I found it, I've lost track and, and the focus has gone on what it was trying to do in the first place. And not only that, but you can also make scribble notes in the margins and sketches and things like this um, when you're handwriting things. So the assessor has a, a good insight into what your thinking was when you were trying to develop your solution. Okay. Let's move on to drafts now. Well, we cannot accept draft assignments, and that doesn't happen in university either, certainly not in engineering. Um, and we can't confirm whether you have the correct answers to assignments either. So we need a, a level playing field for all the students. So, um, many students will never ask su such questions anyway, um, but we, knew we do need to maintain a level playing field for everybody. However, if you phone up and you're really stuck on a principle, you don't understand it, and you know that you need to understand the principle to navigate the assignment. Okay, so we're always here to help you seven days a week. And finally, if you feel that you're rusty on maths, then we do have uh, an excellent bridging maths course. If you feel at all that you're going to struggle on maths, then we do recommend that you go on to the bridging maths course. And the actual syllabus for that is on the website. So take a look and make sure that you can easily um, navigate all those topics that are on the bridging maths course before you come on to the HNC. Okay, so that was pretty much all I want to speak about at this point regarding HNC manufacturing. Thank you.